Hi, it's Miles here at Fabricana, and I am very excited to introduce you all to the world of pleated drapes. Now, there are other pleated drape videos out there. Ours has lining. Um, the lined panel that we make is very similar to the technique that we showed you in our grommet top drape. Um, it is slightly different, but that's a very old video of ours. It was very popular, so we wanted to do another drapery video. Um, the sound quality was not the best on that one, so hopefully you can hear me today and you'll be able to follow along. I want to talk about some of the advantages of pleated drapes, and that is um, obviously the classic beautiful look. Another thing is a lot of fabric goes into these, so you'll have more fabric for light uh, control. Also more fabric will help with insulation at your windows. Um, another thing is with pleats, um, no matter what size your window is, once you know how many panels you need, you can use the size of your pleats to exactly control the size of your finished drape. That'll become more apparent in the video. Um, if there's certain techniques you're interested in, we will have timestamps for the techniques, for the math, the measuring, all that stuff. So if you're looking for something specific, you can find that information in the timestamps below. Um, so. I'm excited, we're ready to get started. Um, please follow us on our Facebook page and Instagram. If you're enjoying this content, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let's get started. We're gonna start off with everyone's favorite, math. If you're looking at a drapery video, you are gonna have to do some math. I'm gonna try and make it really simple and give you some visual aids, so stick with me. So of course, if you're making drapes, it's probably probably because you have a window. It might be for a closet or for a room divider, but usually it's gonna be for a window. So let's say we have a window. We'll start with that. Maybe it's divided in the middle. So if we have a window and we're gonna hang drapes, we're gonna have a drapery rod. So the rod is going to extend past the width of the window because we don't want the light to be able to seep in past the drapes. So let's pretend that our drapes are gonna hang like this. We want them to hang a little bit lower than the window as well for the same reason we don't want light to escape. So if our window, let's say, so can I draw upside down? Sure. Let's say our window is 38 inches wide. And let's say we want to have at least three inches on either side. So that's six inches total wider. So the actual width of our entire drape is going to be 44 inches. So that's a very important to figure out how wide the actual width of the drapes are. Um, it's different from what the window is. It's probably different from what the total um, width of the rod is but it's a very important measurement to know exactly what the width of the drapes are. Now we're going to be doing a center split, so our drapes are going to be divided into 22 and 22 on each side. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, then we have to figure out how much fabric we need, and to do that we need to know the length of our drapes as well. Now for our example, our drapes are going to be 40 inches long. Um, now the length is, if you're measuring at home, you're going to measure from the bottom of your rod, which is probably where your drapes are going to be sitting, to either just below your window or possibly to the floor. If you're going to the floor, measure not quite to the floor, probably about a half inch higher than the floor is good because you don't want our drapes dragging on the floor. So for our pur purposes today, we're going to assume our drapes are 40 inches long. Okay. Uh, in a second, I'm going to show you how to calculate the width, how many panels you need. All right, so let's talk about how many panels we need for our drapes. Now, the, um, the reason we need multiple panels is depending on the width of your drapes. So for our example today, we're working with 44 inch finished drapes and we're going to be putting pleats in them so the drapes obviously have to be wider the amount of fabric we need is wider than the finished drape because a lot of that fabric is going to get eaten up in the pleats so drapery fabric is generally 54 inches wide so that's a very important calculation when we're figuring out how many panels we're going to need so if our drapes are 44 inches wide like we discussed before Let's say I want to have two times fullness. That means I want my drapes to be twice as wide as my window. So times two, I would get 
88 inches finished. So that would be two times fullness, but what does that mean for how many panels I need? So to figure out the number of panels, I'm going to take my 88 divided by the width of fabric, which is 54, and that tells me 1.6 panels. Well, I don't want to do a 0.6 of the panel, I want to do a nice round number. So if I jump up to two panels, two times 54 is 108, so it'll be a little bit wider, it'll mean my fullness is a little bit wider, um, and that's fine. We'll just take out the extra fullness in the pleats. I hope this makes sense. Generally, we don't want to split panels. Um, so if you end up with your calculations with an odd number of panels, you can do that. You can split one of your panels in half and have half of the panel on one side of your window and half on the other. I would generally put those half panels on the outside of the window so the seams are less obvious because you're going to have to have extra seams, um, but it can be done. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, generally, fullness for pleated drapes is going to be between two and two and a half times fullness. So we will end up there because we're going a little bit wider. Um, we'll have a little bit more than two times fullness, but not quite two and a half. So I hope that makes sense. Let's move on to the length calculations. All right, let's talk about length. Uh, the length of our drapes is very important. We don't want them to pool on the floor and we don't want them to be too short that it looks like we skimped on fabric. So the length is very important. As we mentioned before, for the purposes of our video today, uh, we're doing a 40 inch finished length. So I'm gonna write that down. That's our finished length. But we're not gonna cut our fabric to 40 inches because there's lots of things that we have to add. Um, and one of those things is at the top of our drape, there's a three inch, we call it a header tape. I should say three and a half inches, excuse me. So we need to have fabric that covers the, pleat, the header tape. And so we need an extra three and a half inches at the top. And then for drapes, we do a really big hem as well. And we're allowing eight inches for the hem. Three and a half for the header eight inches for the hem. Now we're not going to just sew a big eight inch hem, we're going to allow for the eight inches, then we're going to fold that hem in half so it's actually finished uh, four inches. But what that does is it gives us a lot of weight at the bottom of our drape and that helps our drapes to hang really nicely. That extra fabric in the hem keeps our drapes hanging nice and heavy. I should probably add this up for us. So my total length that I need to cut for my panels for a 40 inch finished length drape, I need to actually cut 51 and a half inch panels. Now I'm using today a plain fabric. Well, it's beautiful, it's actually textured. I shouldn't say plain, um, but you might be using a print. And if you want your print to match across all of your panels and across the second panel, if you're doing a split, you'll need to allow a little, little extra fabric uh, when you're at the fabric store, uh, they can help you calculate the repeat of your print. So you may need to purchase a little bit more than the 51 and a half, in my example, um, in order to match the print. Um, so just remember that if you're buying a print, um, you may need to get a little extra fabric. All right, in a second, I'm going to show you how to cut the lining. All right, let's talk about calculating the length of our lining. Um, I should go back and say, the number of panels that you need for your lining, because uh, lining, uh, drapery lining is the same width as drapery fabric, 54 inches wide, so your calculations for the number of panels will be the same for your lining, but your lengths are going to be a little bit shorter. We do a shorter hem on the lining, and we, do, um, we don't go quite to the top of the header with the lining. So the hard and fast rule for the method you're following today is to cut your lining panels five inches shorter than what you're cutting your drapery panels. So as you remember from before, we were cutting our drapery fabric at 51 and a half inches. So minus five inches, we're gonna be cutting our lining panels at 46 and a half inches. All right, we're gonna take a breather from the math and actually show you some real fabric and some sewing. So I've gone ahead and prepared my uh, drapery panel. So like I said, we cut the width of the fabric, and then the length, we cut 
uh, 51 and a half inches. I've stitched the header tape to the top of the drape. And this is um, that kind of strong, um, stiff tape that we put at the top of the drape so it holds the pleats nice and stiff. And then at the bottom, we've done our eight inch hem, but as I mentioned before, we had folded up a full eight and then we folded the hem allowance in half. So now it's finished four inches and I've stitched that down. So that's the preparation for our drapery panel. And the preparation that I've done for the drapery lining is as I mentioned before, we're folding back two and a half inches at the top of the drape because the lining isn't gonna come quite to the top of the drape. And at the hem, we're doing a six inch hem. So I've, again, pressed back a full six inches I folded that hem allowance in half and I've stitched it down so we have a finished hem of three inches. The other really important thing is the width of the lining is going to be a little bit narrower than our drape too. It'll make a little bit more sense in a couple minutes when you see the actual sewing, but your, um, the width of your lining piece should be three inches narrower than your um, drapery fabric. So our fabric was actually a little bit wider than normal. It was 56 inches wide. So I've left that 56 after cutting off the selvages and I've cut my lining 53 inches wide. So the lining is always three inches narrower than your fabric. And that's not for each panel, that's for the total number of panels. So let's say you've stitched two panels together of your drapery fabric because you have a much wider drape. For your lining pieces, when you have multiple panels, it's not gonna be three inches smaller per panel, it's gonna be three inches narrower overall. I hope that makes sense. All right, everybody, if you've gotten to the point where you've sewn on your header tape, you've got your hem done on your fabric, and your hem done on your lining, and you fold it back two and a half inches at the top of your lining, you're ready to grab some pins and we're gonna put the lining together with the fabric. So I have my fabric, this, um, the crease of the hem is away from me towards the table, and the header tape is also towards the table. So I have the right side of my fabric facing up. I'm gonna take the, the header that I folded back for the lining, I'm gonna bring that towards the top of my drape. I'm gonna bring the hem of the lining towards the hem of my drape. Uh, basically, there's a crease where we folded our heading back. So that crease, the lining is going to sit an inch below that. So when I fold back the header over the lining, the raw edge of the lining will match the lower edge of my header tape. We are going to pin through all layers at that point and I'm going to continue down the length of the side of my drape, matching up the raw edge of the lining with the raw edge of the drapery fabric. And you'll notice that the lining is a little bit shorter than the drape as well. And we wanna make sure that our lining is shorter than the drape, so when they're hanging, there's no chance of seeing the lining from the right side of the drape. So once you have all of those pins in place, we're gonna bring that to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew that seam. So we're gonna start sewing from the top of the drape at the header. We are stitching with a straight stitch with a half inch seam allowance. I've done a nice uh, back stitch at the top. I'm going to remove my pins as I go. We're going to do a nice back stitch here. And before we leave the machine, while we're here, you're going to see there's a little raw edge of the hem of the drapery lining that's actually, it won't show from the front, but from the inside of the drape you would see it. So if you're concerned about that, right now before we do anything else, I'm gonna set my machine to a zigzag stitch and I'm just gonna zigzag that little bit of fabric. 
so we never have to worry about that unraveling and it's nice and finished looking now no surgery required so I'm holding the seam that we just sewed at the one edge of the drape now if I hold that up the other side you'll notice the lining doesn't come close to that and that's because we cut the lining three inches narrower than the drape so we need to gently bring the edge of the lining to the edge of our drapery fabric and we're going to do exactly the same thing that we did at the other end I'm bringing that creased edge of the top of my lining one inch below the crease of my header I'm going to fold that back over the lining and you've got this in a close-up just a second ago so if you need a refresher you can jump back I'm going to go back to the sewing machine and sew this seam and then I'm going to meet you back at the iron. All right, so we have both edges of our drape stitched. Now before I can turn this inside out, in the seam allowance just below the header tape, I'm going to make a little clip right to the seam that I stitched. I'm going to do that on both sides. So this is clipping through the lining and through the drapery fabric. Be really careful with this so you don't clip into your stitching. Now the reason we do that is to kind of release the lining. So when we turn the whole thing right side out, and I'm kind of reaching in kind of between where I folded back the header tape, I'm going to turn that inside out. This could be pretty fun if you've got multiple panels and a longer drape but you can persevere. So I'm just gonna nicely roll up that corner. Then we're going to press. So with the right sides out, I'm just gonna lay my drape and lining on the ironing board. And I'm gonna let the seam allowance of the drape go away from me. So we're actually just pressing the lining. Press the drape seam allowance stays flat. So once we have both of our side seams um, pressed with the lining, the seam allowance is going towards the lining, the next thing we want to do is pin at the header. Now I want to find, I've already kind of marked magically the center point of my lining. Actually I'm just going to make sure that that's still correct. Let's have a look here. So I'm just finding the halfway point of my lining at the top and I'm going to do the same thing on my drape header. I'm just going to put a pin in at the center point because I need to match those points so that the lining is centered with the drape. So when I open this up, I'm going to match those two points. Now keep in mind the lining doesn't go right to the top of the header. It'll sit a little bit below that but the raw edge of the header tape and the raw edge of your lining will match up. So once we've lined up those center points, because the lining was narrower, the lining kind of pulls the um, side seam of the drape to the back. So we actually see a little bit of the drape, the lining doesn't come right to the edge because then we, may, we might be able to see the lining. So we should have about an inch of the drapery fabric exposed on the sides. So I'm just going to press that side seam so that we'll have a nice sharp crease down the length of our drapes. Do that all the way down the length. I'm going to do that for the other side and then we're ready to start doing more math. So we have our drapery panel with the lining, laying with the lining side down. Uh, before we calculate the size of our pleats, we need to just uh, quickly measure the width of our panel. Do that. And it, it is 53 and a half inches. That is my panel. Now, as you recall, we were doing drapes for a finish width of 44, and this is just half of the width. Or it's only one of the panels with a 
uh, split opening. So half of 44 is 22. So that's our finished for one drape. And I'm so good, I forgot to put my 0.5 here. So, our panel is 53 and a half inches. We want to get it down to 22 inches. So the difference from that is going to be taken out as pleats. Let's do some quick math. We're going to take out 31 and a half inches from this panel with pleats. So we need to figure out how many pleats we're going to do and what the space in between those pleats are. So I kind of like around three to four inches for the spacing between the pleats. So how many spaces will I get out of 22 inches? So I'm going to take 22 divided by three and that's seven, just over seven. So I'm going to have seven spaces, but I have spaces at either end. So that gives me six pleats. So just kind of, I'll maybe do that visually. Once we have our drape done, if we have seven spaces, one, two, three, one in the middle, four, five, six, seven. That leaves us one, two, three, four, five, six pleats. Okay, so that's important to know. Okay, so the spaces here are three inches between the pleats and we're taking out 31 and a half inches in pleats and we're gonna have six pleats. So 31 and a half divided by six. So each pleat is five and a quarter inches. So let's just kind of go through that again. We measured our panel, it's 53 wide. We know that we're gonna take pleats out of it to get it down to a finish of 22. So that means we have to reduce it by 31 and a half inches in the pleats. We figured out that we wanna do approximately a three inch spacing. So that meant that we were gonna do seven spaces, which meant since we don't have pleats at either end, there are six pleats going in. So their spacing is three inches, our pleats, we take the 31 and a half inches divided by six pleats and we get five and a quarter inches. So hang on with me. I'm gonna show you how to mark the pleats at the top of your drape. So I've grabbed this really handy clear ruler, which marks all of the measurements here. So I'm gonna mark our first space because we start with a space and then we have a pleat. So I'm going to use a fabric chalk pencil to mark the three inches. I'm gonna move my ruler down and I'm gonna mark my first pleat, which is five and a quarter. I'm just gonna double check. One, two, three, four, five and a quarter inches. And I'm gonna mark the end of that first pleat. And I'm just gonna continue doing this. Now I've got a space of three inches, another pleat of five and a quarter, and then I'm gonna continue across the top of the drape. So once we have all of our spaces and pleats marked, um, I'm gonna ask that you stick a pin at the center of each pleat through the header tape and through the lining. And the reason we do that is because the lining isn't attached at the top, it's only attached to the sides. So we don't want the lining to shift as we're creating our pleats. So this pin will hold our lining in place while we're creating the pleats. Once the pleats are stitched, the lining will actually be stitched into the pleat so it's not going anywhere. But for the meantime, we're gonna put these pins in to keep the pleats in place. Now, once you have those pins in place, we are gonna go back to the sewing machine. We are ready to sew our first pleat. We have a pin holding the lining in place. So I need to bring these two lines together. So I fold and I look at the top to match up the pleat on the underside and the upper side. And I bring this into my machine. I'm gonna stitch right down my marking. So I backstitch at the top and I'm gonna stitch through my pleat the length of the header tape. I can feel the header tape, it's really thick through the layers. Trimmed my threads. 
and I will continue with the rest of the pleats and then I'll show you how to make it a triple pleat. So let's take a look at what we've accomplished. We've put all of our pleats in. They're pretty big and floppy. Uh, while we're here, I'm just gonna show you what we've done. Is our panel had been 53 and a half, and now it is exactly 22 inches. So pat on the back, but our big floppy pleats need to change. And the way we're gonna do that, and maybe this is why they're called pinch pleats, I'm not really sure, but I'm gonna pinch my pleat. Um, I'm gonna grab the pleat at the crease, making sure that I'm grabbing the lining as well. Stick my finger in there. And I'm gonna flatten it out like that. So I'm kind of doing it in thirds. So I've got like a third of it in my fingers. I'm gonna fold up the other two sides to join that center one. So I've basically gone from a single pleat to three and that'll be much more attractive, much more tailored looking, and not so floppy. I'm gonna stick a pin to hold those in place. So I'm just working on the last pleat here, ready to put in the last pin. Now, I should have warned you, there is gonna be a bit of hand sewing. It's just a little bit, just a bar tack for each pleat. So I'm gonna show you how to do the bar tacks, but you can see it's very coming along really nicely, starting to look like a pleated drape. So we have our pleat pinned in place. Um, obviously, you don't want to leave the pins in, so I've threaded a needle in the coordinating color thread, and I've knotted the end. I'm going to go in between a couple of the little pleats here so that my knot doesn't show. And there we go. So my knot will be hidden inside the pleat. And then essentially, I'm just going to be stitching through all these layers. Need a nice strong needle. I'm gonna remove the pin because that's just gonna get in the way. And I'll just do a few loops around. Just so the end of my thread is encased inside the fabric. So there is our finished bar tack. We could press the pleat a little bit more some people will also tack at the top of the pleat through all these layers. Um, that is purely your uh, taste. Once you've gotten to the point where the bar tacks are in, you can either just press those in place, um, or like I said, you can bar tack at the top as well. And that would be a very nice tailored look as well. So here we have, we finished doing all of our hand sewing with all of our beautiful bar tacks. As I said before, you can do uh, additional bar tacks at the top. Um, I haven't done them. You can see what that looks like. It still looks quite nice. Um, the only thing left to do is on the back of your drape, you're gonna take a drapery hook and you're gonna put the pointy end of the hook into that seam that we stitched for the pleat. And you're gonna put a hook at each pleat and a hook at each end and that will support the drape. Um, as I said before, through the magic of film, we've actually done two panels, so that would split from the middle. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed this um, presentation today, all the tips and tricks, um, and that you'll have a chance to try these yourselves. Please let us know how your drapes go. I know when we did the grommet top drape, a lot of people uh, were really happy with that video, and they told us um, uh, all the steps that they were enjoying, all the tips that they enjoyed. They had questions as well, and we're free to answer any questions that you have about the pleated drapes as well, so please do. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and continue to watch us on Facebook and Instagram.